Tonight's big story, it's one term only for Governor Lowell Weicker. This decision not to run for re-election in 1994 is made both with elation and some regret. Does this end a 31-year political career, or does Mr. Weicker have something else up his sleeve? And who's left competing for his job in 94? We've got the special team coverage and analysis you expect from Channel 3's experienced political team. It's tonight's big story. Live from WFSB Channel 3, you're watching Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock. Good evening, I'm Janet Peckinpah. I'm Don Lark. After much speculation, Governor Weicker puts the rumors to rest. He will not seek re-election in 1994. His decision now leaves the race for governor wide open and Lowell Weicker's future wide open. Channel 3 political reporter Doobie McDowell begins our special coverage of the big story with the governor's decision. But now is the time for a joyful parting of the ways. For the state, that means getting on with its election business. For me, it is getting on with governor business and ultimately a return home. And home is where Lowell Weicker told Connecticut he will not seek a second term. Greenwich, the town that chose him as a state representative in 1962 and where he conceded his Senate seat to Joe Lieberman 26 years later. At that time, he said he had no more political ambitions, but would roar back two years later, straight to the governor's office. I seriously considered running again, uh, all up until about, I would say, a month ago, and then had to sit down and really weigh, you know, what the future would hold. Weicker says he wants the future to bring more time with his school-aged children. And indeed, his three years in office have been full. He would shock the state by introducing an income tax, veto every alternative budget, finally sign the tax into law, then face the wrath of thousands, but eventually see acceptance of the tax. He called for desegregating the schools before the courts did. Casinos in Hartford or Bridgeport had his veto to contend with, and he's put the power of his office behind the push for Connecticut-based NFL team. At today's news conference, Weicker would not rule out a third-party run for the presidency and was asked how realistic an option that is. I don't think, quite frankly, that's in the cards, but uh, uh, I don't think this is the time to go ahead and discuss a whole range of, of options. Employment in the private sector? Weicker says he's available, but he reminded the state he has another year in office and did so in typical Weicker fashion. And if anybody looks upon this individual as a lame duck on a pond, you better think twice because you're going to find something coming out of Jurassic Park at you. Uh, uh, uh. Weicker claims he's doing this for his kids, the seven boys he and wife Claudia have between them. One of the eldest said he was ecstatic. He knew already our feelings, Doobie, and we've stood by him from day one, we'd always stand by him. But now he's got grandchildren, his own younger children, and I think he really wanted to spend more time with them. It is bittersweet. It's, uh, it's a, the end of a, a part of a political legacy or era, and yet for us it's really the beginning of a whole new life. Well, Channel 3's political reporter, Do Doobie McDowell, as you saw, was there for that announcement this morning. Doobie, of course, has covered the governor extensively, first during his campaign, then throughout his term. She has experience, you see, only on three, and she's in the Eyewitness News Satellite Center now with some inside perspective. Doobie, Mr. Weicker has always done well in a three-way contest, and clearly he was in a position to run very strong if he had stayed in. Well, you're right, Don, because the latest statewide poll had showed that about 40% of Connecticut voters would like to see him have been governor again. Now, 40% doesn't do much for you in a two-way race, but obviously this would have been a three-way race. That's what he would have needed. Certainly, it would have been a bruising and expensive race, but he was in certainly a very, very strong position. Well, Dewey, the governor says he's walking away for family reasons. Much has been made about the need uh, to support that family, yet uh, Weicker was generally regarded as a millionaire uh, who really didn't need the money. Is there more to this? Well, he, he gets v very angry when people refer to him as the heir to the Squibb Pharmaceutical Corporation, and certainly that was uh, his family's business. But as he will tell people very quickly, he doesn't get a whole lot of money 
uh, from that. A lot of it is tied up in trust. Of course, how much is a lot is all relative to people. Uh, he makes $78,000 a year as governor. Very good salary, but at the same time, he has two alimonies to pay, and um, we, one can assume some child support in there as well. And many people close to him had said he had really enjoyed making some money when he was in the private sector uh, for Research America and perhaps would like to return to that type of salary level. Well, you've been following him uh, closely for years. What do you think? Is there another unexpected turn he might take? Could he change his mind? Well, some of those have been discussed before he made the announcement. Uh, one possibility, people said, well, perhaps he's going to uh, make this announcement that he's out and then come, let's say, the spring. Uh, makes an announcement that none of the candidates are saying anything uh, worthwhile. I got to get back in here to save the state. He said today his decision was irrevocable. We'll see. Another scenario which he addressed today uh, was the idea that he might resign before the end of his term, thus giving his lieutenant governor, Eunice Gore, kind of a leg up because she would be the acting governor. He addressed that as well, said, I don't know where people get that idea that he is out of this race and is going to stay out of it. Well, 16 months left in his uh, term in office. It should be interesting. Thank you, Doobie. So the race for governor is wide open tonight. There is a long list of wannabes, but only two announced candidates in the race so far. In a couple of weeks, however, as Channel 3's Jeffrey Cole shows us, there could be enough candidates for governor to fill out a baseball lineup. Now here's the guy who's caused all the commotion, Lowell P. Weicker, walking into a reception of cappuccino and cake at the Capitol just a few hours after throwing in the towel. Hey, well, I'm just going to enjoy myself. Yeah. One of the first to greet Weicker, a man who badly wants his job, Senate President John Larson. Weicker's bowing out is the best news Larson's heard in a long time. Clearly, it's helped our candidacy out uh, tremendously. I think I'm the direct uh, beneficiary of that. And so we're prepared to move on to the Democratic nomination in uh, 1994. Larson was the first to jump in the race. Fellow Democrat Richard Balducci came next. For the rest of the potential candidates, uh, it's an opportunity. I certainly think it enhances the opportunity for the Democratic candidate uh, to become uh, governor in next fall. Comptroller Bill Curry is interested, but he's not saying for what. Weicker's lieutenant governor all but announced today it appears she'll jump in just a week. I've been here. I haven't been in Washington. I haven't been on Elm Street. I haven't been out in Burlington or something. I've been right here with him. And we have built a record, and it's that record that I would run on. But what about the Republicans? Representative Nancy Johnson, former Representative John Rowland, and Secretary of the State Paul N. Kieser are all sitting on the fence. Whether I can serve the state better as a member of the Ways and Means Committee or as governor is really the fundamental issue. Well, I'm definitely considering the race again. Uh, it would have been fun to have uh, had a rematch with Lowell. Well, here we are at the good old state capitol, and we are coming up with our scorecard for the race for governor. Here they are, starting Larson, Balducci, Grork, Kieser, Curry, Johnson, Rowland. That's seven players. Two more. We've got a full ball team. So let's take a look at our lineup. Balducci and Larson are off and running. Curry and Grork are thinking about it. So are Johnson, Kieser, and Rowland. By the way, candidates, don't look to the governor for any help. They're looking for an endorsement. <laughs> My endorsing days are over. <laughs> Jeffrey Cole, Channel 3 Eyewitness News, Hartford. Well, there it is. So what do you think about Governor Weicker's decision? Channel 3's Allison Schaefer has set out across the state to sample many of your opinions. We've checked in with her all evening on Eyewitness News, and tonight she ends her journey in Newington. In Newington at WPOP Radio, folks have been calling in for a couple of days to talk about Weicker's decision. In there, on the air right now, is Tom Scott, who was a big gadfly to the Weicker administration. Scott helped organize the big opposition rally when the income tax was announced back in 1991. People are actually dancing in the streets. Lowell Weicker is about to give the people of Connecticut the Bronx chair as he heads to his million-dollar condo in St. Croix. People and, and, and by the way, and at what cost? I've already forgotten about the income tax, and that shows in the poll figures, and that if there was a three-way race, Lowell Weicker would probably win. But they're not just talking on Connecticut's airwaves. They're also talking on Connecticut's main streets. We're in downtown Newington, and here is what folks have to say. I think he's been a stubborn governor. But other than that, I have not much of an opinion. As far as I'm concerned, it's up to him if he wants to run or not. I think uh, he done a good job while he was there. And uh, I got a feeling he's going up for something higher than that, like presidency or something like that. And I wish him luck. I don't know. I never really liked him anyway, with the income tax and all. I think that he's done a good job. I think that the state of Connecticut has uh, improved in the time that he served as governor.
So that's what voters are saying all over Connecticut today about the governor's big decision. One note, folks don't seem all that surprised by this decision. After all, he's a pretty unpredictable guy. So whether you love him or hate him, the governor has left a big impression on this small state. In Newington, Allison Schaefer, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. Wrapping up tonight's big story for you, Governor Weicker calling it quits after one term there, ending thus far 31 years in public office. However, he's leaving his options open from the private sector to the presidency. The governor says he's not ruling anything out. And finally, this leaves the race for governor wide open. So far, only two candidates have confirmed a run. Democratic state senators Richard Balducci and John Larson.